and we are going to be discussing all things chills, thrills, and kills. Kate and I are going to be talking about our favorite books, TV shows, and movies that are in the thriller or crime fiction genre, as well as some reading habits and other items related to how we met on Bookstagram um, that will fit in with this podcast. So thank you so much for joining us, and we hope that you have fun and get totally terrified. So we are continuing our fun little author tour of the summer. Yes. Today. With Miss May Cobb. Yes. The sweetest <laughs> cherry in Texas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Thanks for having me on, guys. I love y'all. Oh my God. We love, love you. you. I'm so excited to talk to you. Um yes. as you know, Kate and I have been like huge fans of your books since the hunting wives and we are so pumped to talk to you um i personally want to be one of the stab cherries on the book cover <laughs> of my summer darlings but maybe maybe for book four we'll be like yeah. a little... <laughs> but today we're going to be talking about a likable woman and we don't just mean may yeah. Her book. <laughs> the book is the, the book is a likable woman may is the lovable woman <laughs> there we go <laughs> so yeah, I love oh my god oh, I love the this cover amazing oh my god i love it you had some people it. do some really cool like kind of like amazing covers yeah like uh what am i trying to say they would like stage themselves in the pool. There's some cool, cool like cover. Yeah. What am I looking for? What word am I looking for? Like, like, like oh. staging the cover. <laughs> yeah. They recreate the covers. It's there yes. we go. There we go. That's the word I, I needed. Like a roundup of all those. I just haven't had the bandwidth, but I want to because there's been some great ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. There have been some great ones. I wish I had a pool. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I had. I have a pool and I had a tear in my liner and they fixed it and I went in the pool once and then it like cooled down here enough that like I haven't felt the need to be like I haven't been hot enough to like actually go in the pool since it was fixed. Oh yeah, so, of course. Yeah, like all of July here sucked. Like it was so hot and humid. I would have like probably drowned myself. But <laughs> this yeah. month it's a little cooler than expected, but I'll take it cuz falls mm-hmm. on the way yeah i mean you're um, in texas so yeah you're probably it's miserable making it. <laughs> yeah it's been over 100 for like like um i don't know like over a month it's awful yeah Ugh, i don't know how you do it i don't we're know we're ready for fall it. here we're continually ready for fall here though yes yeah, yeah always <laughs> yeah we have been since may yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um So, well, one of the things I loved with um, A Likeable Woman is I felt like with The Hunting Wives and My Summer Darlings, you had that, that, you know, female cast ensemble and you had kind of like, I call it like the like thriller version of like Wisteria Lane because they had these like elements that like reminded me of like the juicy gossip of Desperate Housewives and like some of like the darker seasons that that show had. Um, This one is a lot different and it was so good. I loved what you did with like the, the dual perspective um, and timeline, I guess we'll say, Mm -hmm. but um, what was like your indication that you were going to go in the direction of the story of a likable woman? Yeah, because I mean, it is different. So I appreciate you saying that you liked it because not everyone liked that change of direction for me. And, um, and I was expecting that. Um, but I just don't want to be like, you know, a one joke Janet where I'm just known for like, it's porkies, but there's murder, you know, like I wanted it to right. be. Um, and, and I love, you know, I do love like more serious thrillers. And so for this book, kind of the inspirations were Riley Sager's Home Before Dark because of the book within a book. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Um, the Silent Patient because of the, you know, the diary entries. And then yeah. 
the guest list because I love that it was like set over the course of a weekend. It was more closed circle. So I just, I kind of wanted to push and challenge myself to do something different. And I think probably it was also like the pandemic that this is my yeah. pandemic. And so oh. it was probably going to be more emotional and weighty and different anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it still has this like, you know, it's definitely a different direction, but it still has like the the snarkiness in your prose. Like it's very like <laughs> sharp and like, you know, it's kind of like you're almost like having the cover. Like everybody has that one friend, right? That like can go back and forth with you and is like always knows what to like say back. Like they can clap back really well and they like kind of have that like wild personality that like will just like give it to you straight. So like I feel like that aspect of your personality like really shows in your writing and like me personally like I could read a book about just your dialogue Aww. without like any imagery or anything like that because I just like my favorite thing about your writing is your dialogue does not ever seem like one-dimensional or forced like I can actually hear these conversations in my head so you Thank know you even though you <laughs> well even though you went in like a different direction I think that it's definitely something that like your readers will appreciate and like will still have that like makeup like snarkiness that's like almost like a what were those candies that were like sour on the outside and sweet on the inside <laughs> gobstoppers maybe yeah yeah but like that's kind maybe? of like what like the writing reminds me of because it's like got that like sweetness to your characters but they're all like they all got like a little bit of like snarkiness in them yeah you yeah more sour patch kids yeah oh good one yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well thank you i yeah i it's funny there was a little bit of an editorial discussion about whether kira was too snarky about <laughs> stuff and i i just i kind of i dug in a little because i'm like well, first of all, guys, like she is my most likable character that I've come up with to date, but I still want her to have a point of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's not going to waltz into her hometown, into this lion's den and love all these people that aren't really her friends. So I, I didn't want it to feel fake just, you know, to not, you know, turn readers off. Like, and yeah, I guess I'm a snarky bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so who are we so yeah exactly <laughs> good company <laughs> i don't even know if i'm snarky i think i'm just a bitch <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but that's like the there's something about like people from texas that like have that in their personality where they're like really kind but like that snarkiness and like the toughness like will really come out you know like it's like you're nice to everybody until they like kind of like mess with you yeah. Isn't that saying like don't mess with Texas? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's definitely, it's definitely true. My older sister will always be like, oh, she's like even like she's even more extra than me. And she'll be like, you know, <laughs> they don't know that I had already figured out when I told them bless their heart that I figured out where I was gonna hide their body, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love that. I love that. that awesome. I'm um I'm like awful at like elevator pitches or like small synopses of books. So with this one, I'm just going to read a little bit of the back cover. So I don't say something that like people might consider a spoiler. So um, with this one, um, we have Kira who left her hometown after her troublemaker mother's uh, mysterious death and never looked back. Uh, decades later, Kira is invited to an old frenemy's Val renewal party. Um, she's reluctant to go, but things kind of lure her back, like her sexy childhood crush and more importantly, urgent texts from her grandmother who says she has something to give Kira um, that relates to her mother's death and makes it look more like murder than what they originally thought so needless to say um Kira's grandmother gives her a memoir that her mother had been working on before she died and now everything in this town is kind of pointing Kira in the direction that maybe her mother's death was a murder dum 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 yeah <laughs> 
So if I remember correctly, the present timeline, there was snow, right? Was it cold? What am yeah, I it was very cold. It wasn't snow, but it was like okay. it's but it's right before it snows in Texas. Yeah. It, especially where I'm from, which is northeast Texas, we we do get snow. Um mm -hmm a lot more when i was growing up of course because we're all like boiling on this planet but yeah it was yeah. It's very cold there yeah it basically that was one of my favorite parts i was like oh nice i don't have to be hot and sweaty this whole book in my mind yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god i know the, like the setting i i will never forget there's one part in the hunting wives where one of your characters wakes up and it's like sticky hot and she's extremely hungover. And I'm just like, you know what? That's got to be the worst feeling in the entire world. Like, I remember those days back when I was, like, fun. Of, like, waking up hungover when it was, like, really hot. And I was like, oh my God. Like, that's just, like, a very, like, visceral thing to read. Because you're like, oh, God. Like, I remember that pain. Yes. Yeah. I remember being fun, too. And that's kind of why I write the, <laughs> like, bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> yes well listen I think it's safe that you are where you are in your life because I don't think that any of us feel safe in a makeup book <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no one feels safe in a makeup book the thing that I really loved about this one I'm really curious to see what inspired you to write this one because the thing that I loved love love loved in my opinion Kira's mother was not necessarily a bad parent, but I loved the role of having the parent be the one. Oops, smack myself in the face with that. <laughs> I love the role of like having the parent be like the troublemaker compared to like the child. Because usually with stories like this, you have like the parent who's like got the apron on, like the Stepford mom, and then it's like the child is the troublemaker and like the one that's like a little wild compared to other people so I love that the mom was a little bit of like a troublemaker thank you thank you yeah I mean that love really that. great for my mom like she's very much like Sadie extremely like provocative doesn't doesn't bite her tongue um just that's how she is and you know, look out, you know. Um, yeah. Also like this extraordinary mama bear that will, you know, <laughs> hunt you down if you do anything to her daughter. So it's, uh, yeah, uh, really th the whole book came from Sadie because that's the first voice that I heard in my head. And I was like, and I had been in a little bit of a, oh my God, what am I going to write next? And so I was really grateful to have that. And then it kind of all, it all came together because I kind of did want to pay my mom's still with us, thank God, but I wanted to pay tribute to her because she like raised us and, um, you know, uh, for a while, like after my parents divorced, she was pretty much like single working mom, working nights in the hospital, but then still like making batiks and mm -hmm. painting and doing all these really cool out of the box creative things for like back when I grew up in the, you know, the late 80s, early 90s, that was just not that not that heard of in a small town like where I'm from you know what I mean like yeah mm -hmm. maybe in the like in the village in New York that's your role model was that but not not in my town so that's what I was yeah. gonna bring up next is like the in that in the time like in that in the past timeline Sadie's all like it was even more unconventional for a woman to be that way which is a uh, basically a plot point that we are always passionate about <laughs> yeah. is like women who like feel okay being like their whole selves but it was even less common kind of to your point like in your in the location but also just like 30 40 years ago it just wasn't as common yeah yeah, yeah. I love I, Sadie was such a fucking badass like mm -hmm. she is just like uh She's such a rock star. I loved her so, so much. I seriously, I was like, I remember when I was reading the book, I was like, this could have been like a trilogy. You know what I mean? Like we mm -hmm. could have had like a whole book of Sadie, whole book of Kira, and then like maybe like, you know, the third act. Mm -hmm. 
I won't mm -hmm. say anything, but <laughs> there would actually be like another <laughs> book. But yeah, yeah, I just loved Sadie's voice so much. She was, yeah. oh my God. I can like picture her too, like the long hair and like, mm -hmm. just like kind of like badass and like gorgeous and walking around with like the world at her fingertips. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I, I really loved her too. I mean, it's what sort of like pulled me through the story was getting to write her parts. Mm -hmm. So my mom's my best friend. So I did feel like um, it was cathartic to write that because, you know, um, I never cried when I finished a book, but I, I honest to God wept when I wrote, when I typed the ends, like I totally had a breakdown. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, that I had met my deadline, <laughs> but, <laughs> I, but it, for a you know book for me um but no thank you thank you guys I, I I really love Sadie too I uh I say this about all my books just because like I I always try to write with like the screen in mind but man I would love to see Sadie's stuff on screen like in a tv series or something I don't know if it'll ever happen but I feel like yeah. she's a cool character if that's okay for me to say that like I feel like I I don't know I feel yeah, like you picked Kate Hudson for her, Gare, and I love that casting. Yeah, yeah. I don't I think it was like the way that you describe Sadie. I pictured Kate Hudson like almost famous Kate Hudson. And yeah, like see, kind of like how she was in like her 20s and 30s. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And Kate Hudson, like I just I have a huge soft spot for Kate Hudson. I think she could do no wrong. Um, but yeah, I think I would love to see like Kate Hudson. And she's like, she always talks about how much she loves like the 70s and 80s like era and everything. So she mm -hmm. would like fully, fully embody that. But I think you have a chance. I honestly do. I think that like thrillers that have dual perspective or dual timelines and the thing is is that I, I feel like when I'm reading a book by you sometimes I forget there's a murder involved because I'm mm, so wrapped yeah. up with what the characters are doing I'm so like just like riding right along with them in a sense of like experiencing what they're like like getting a feel for their personality and just like going along with them in life that like even if they like go grocery shopping I'm like oh like what are we going to get for groceries today and then I'm like oh <laughs> shit like we are supposed to be investigating murder like focus but I think that that's the thing is that your characters are so well written that they would be fantastic on screen mm -hmm. and you know you have that murder aspect but like having a dual timeline story is like really good for an adaptation so I mean especially when they can like sometimes when they go back and forth between certain characters perspectives like you bounce mm -hmm. between episodes I love when they do that that would be perfect have you yeah. ever watched the affair the show the affair I have so no no oh. so it's like it's about an affair but I think it's the whole first season but they kind of have the same thing happen but mm -hmm. the first half of the episode is from his perspective where the woman he has the affair with is like a little flirty you know like hiking her skirt up a little bit at him and kind of like coming on to him and initiating the affair in his mind <laughs> and then the second half is her perspective where it's like she's just being herself and he's the one that's like flirting with her in front of his wife and doing these other mm -hmm. things and I feel like that's the vibe I get with this where it's like you could have those episodes where like half of them from Sadie half of them from Kira that'd be really you know? yeah yeah well I mean did you write like back and forth or did you write like all Sadie and then all Kira or vice versa like how did how was that writing process for this one mm-hmm uh so Sadie did come first so I like I wrote the first five scenes or whatever or entries and then I stopped and I kind of like kind of conceptualized Kira's stuff and then I wrote them like one after the other um for the for the most part you know wow. um as, as much as I can remember I mean this was in like <laughs> trenches of the shutdown and my kid was at yeah. home crazy yeah. on it. Ah! Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're like I've slept a few times since then. So, oh my yeah. God, I don't even like to 
that time is so gross. But uh, yeah, I usually I usually do try to write like I usually do start and go, even if it's different POVs. I don't like to kind of go out of order. I don't think I can. I think it's too hard for my brain. People that use Scrivener can do that kind of stuff, but I'm like I'm too old for Scrivener. <laughs> old for and I can't do all that stuff. So I. <laughs> My office looks so messy and there's papers all over the floor because like that's not <laughs> Hey, listen, <laughs> I am not going happens. to knock I'm not gonna knock the office because you have three books that I have absolutely loved. So Yeah. Keep those papers on they the floor. Look, the office can look <laughs> how it looks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave them there if that's what it takes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean I'm think... impressed by that. Oh, go ahead. No, you're totally fine. I was going to ask if you think you'll always place your books in Texas. Like, so since you kind of switched your narrative structure this time, do you ever plan on writing something not in Texas or do you just want to stay there? Yeah. The funny thing is, is the book I'm editing right now. My next one is it's the first one not set in Texas. It's uh, nice. it's yeah, it's set in Hollywood. So <gasps> Oh That's my, my new hyperfixation. <laughs> yeah, we are loving Hollywood <laughs> stories lately. So that's amazing. Yes. Thank you. We'll see. Oh we'll god. see. Let me know. Oh my god, I'm in the thick of edits, but uh yeah. So so that's kind of crazy, but then I think the one I'm going to start next is back in Texas. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. do it really well in Texas, so I didn't know. You could go either way. Well, the thing is, you're so creative that, like, you could, like, I mean, there are so many stories you have left to write in your writing career. So, like, keeping them in Texas, like, if that works for you, then by all means, go ahead. Because I think the thing is, is, like, as you continue to write, like, you could add in, like, fun little Easter eggs for, like, previous books and things like that. And, like, mm -hmm. having it in Texas, you know, like, could be, like, a real treat, you know, even if you mentioned, like, a restaurant from, like, a previous one, but... Yeah, no, that's a great idea. That I, would be I, fun. Books to write, Gare. I don't know. It's just so day to day. <laughs> I have full I faith in you. I have yeah. full faith in you. I've never read any books that are like yours. Like they're so cinematic, and your like your prose is so fun. Like it's yes. so like snarky, but like it's like it's got that snarky like sweet vibe to it but like you just get lost in it like it's very lyrical mm -hmm. thank you thank you that yeah. means a thank you yeah I'm always yeah. always pumped to read a new Maycob book I'll tell you what and like I mean like I said with like I love how you did the dual perspective with this one like the book within a book I have talked to plenty of authors before who have done this and they're like this is the hardest book to write is the one that had the book within a book so I mean, you told amazing stories and I am extremely impressed with your writing with this one because I felt like Sadie's memoir and Kira's timeline were very parallel with one another. Yes. Like, yeah, they I just love when the timelines, together. like the climaxes kind of come together well oh at my the end. god it definitely did that but i agree oh, i love when there so are two good. timelines and it's like different stuff is happening but it's like also still the same pacing all together and then it like mm -hmm. comes together at the end yeah I it's like that. a little like triangle like kira's over here sadie's over here they're doing their own thing and like as the book goes on they get like closer and closer to like mm -hmm. overlapping or like connecting and i was just like oh my god it was so hard for me to put down i don't think i did yeah. actually I think I read this on a Saturday, so I was like, I'm not putting it down until it's done. <laughs> You're making me so good about the book. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's so oh, good. Yeah. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Like, the characters, the scenes, like, there's so many, like, scenes that I remember, like, in my head, like, mm -hmm. what they looked like. Like, there was, like, the scene at the bar. Mm -hmm. And I could just, there's like, picture like what that bar looked like and like even though you can't I don't think you can smoke in bars in Texas can you just in certain places yeah <laughs> like that's what I kind of pictured I kind of pictured yeah. this like this bar being the place that like you know you can smoke in here if you want but if somebody complains put it out you know like right. one of those like situations where you have like the red like Coors Light sign and then like the cigarette smoke like it was just so like 
emblazoned in my mind like i just remember mm-hmm. like so many like key scenes obviously i'll never forget the finale but i can't describe I know. what that i was gonna like. say there's a there's a scene in water too that like when we started talking about it again like that's what keeps going through my head oh my god i can picture mm-hmm. the trees by the water and yes, like does it, everything yes. <laughs> yeah we're thinking the same thing <laughs> yeah that's funny that's funny you bring that up my dad called me last night because he just finished it and he said oh my god just grab the cove and that was like where we had this like little lake house cabin i was like yeah so (laughs) it was was yeah it's funny yeah yeah it was so good so good and i hope that everybody reads it i mean it's like your books i think you can read year round like they're always going to yeah. be fun and enjoyable. Like if you are ever in a reading slump, pick up a May Cobb book. But like, mm-hmm. this is just like such a like fun reading experience for me in in the summer. Like I always look forward to your books in the summer. Thank you. And I loved that you dedicated it to your mom. I know you've talked about how she was like the inspiration, but I remember like, I think because you, you posted the dedication page before like arcs were even out and it said something along the lines of like thanking your mom for saying the least the last thing you should worry about is being a likable woman something along those lines and I was like I got like goosebumps when I saw that Instagram post I was like oh I love stuff like that so we just love everything about it thank you yeah Yeah. she I I really did kind of come out like a people pleaser I mean I'm adopted so I don't have her her DNA and so she was always mm. like drilling that into my brain and finally I think I'm there at 50 you know um so okay. yeah. some people never get there so I mean I still struggle with it I still just want to make everyone happy all the time which is awesome but not really. <laughs> I used to be like that and I stopped like two years ago and I was just like at the end of the day like you're laying your head down on your pillow in your bed and no matter how shitty you feel throughout the day from trying to please everybody else those people are not the one at the end of the day that are with you that are trying to comfort you from everything Mm -hmm. that you've tried to do for them so I mean at the end of the day like it's fine to be a people pleaser to a certain extent but like at the end of the day like you have to take care of yourself first yeah Mm -hmm. no be true that's very true yeah Yeah. that's a good because everybody around you loves you for who you are so like Mm -hmm. if you continue to run yourself into the ground being a people pleaser then eventually it's just going to like you know make you so stressed out that nobody want to be around you yeah (laughs) one and one fun perspective would be like i wonder if writing like these like snarky and like confident women like kind of like helped you grow into like yeah why why do I care what people think because like you write so many characters that don't so it's kind of cool that like over time it kind of went away for you too yeah that's true it probably has helped me honestly in some kind of way um the things that we have to take care of where's Murphy (laughs) oh my gosh where is he (laughs) oh my god he is being he's with the babysitters right now because Little Murphy is like my Sour Patch kid. Like some nights he's like so sweet. And I'm like, I think the the (laughs) puppy stage of like being bad is like over. And then the next day he'll be like a tormentor again. But he's, he's teething. So the other day, like I got a package of new clothes and I had like this like fresh white t-shirt on and he went to grab the sleeve and it was like, a May Cobb scene like there was blood everywhere on my <laughs> sleeve because he like lost a tooth and like was trying to tell me that he lost it and <laughs> he lost another tooth last night so we're just we're teething and I'm trying to be a good doodle dad but whoa, <laughs> the struggle is real sometimes I'm sorry that teething business is a lot I only he have did. two canines left. He like right now he Ooh. looks like a little vampire because he's only got the two on the top. So oh, he's got, that's adorable. He's got <laughs> those two little canines left. And I'm like, after that, like hopefully he will be yeah. 
not so bitey but he only does it out of excitement you know he's Mm -hmm. he's a good boy but he's just he's a lot he's a lot like my best friend has two little girls and three dogs and two cats and a husband and I'm like (laughs) I have one dog and I'm like how are you doing this like there's some (laughs) days that I feel like I'm like falling apart like at yeah. the end of the day, I'm like, oh my God, I'm I'm doing something wrong. I'm like, this is me. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, how could I ever raise a child? Seriously, though. No, no. I don't it know. It's like, like, it's not for the weak. <laughs> it's, no. not, it's it's them. It's not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, I feel the same way about like my dogs, but also about my kids. Like some Tay is my like little two-year-old like is very very sweet and I love her and she's so funny and then other days she's like like today my friend is like going out of town to go camping and she like texted me and was like I'm so embarrassed we were in Target and my daughter was going help me no get away get away and so people thought that she was like kidnapping her own child and she was like I am so embarrassed oh my god and I was like oh Murphy lost a tooth but like I could not do that (laughs) that's pretty brutal my god almighty I would die (laughs) yeah yeah my mom said like my mom used to take me shopping like that was like our thing when the weekends came so she would take me shopping and like that was our thing but I guess I was like always very curious about how you could only see the upper half of somebody when they were standing behind like a cash register or like a counter. So my thing when I was little was like, I guess I was very curious what their footwear was. Like, are you wearing slippers? (laughs) Are you wearing shoes? And so I used to like, when my mom would cash out, I used to go to the cashier and be like, can I see what shoes you're wearing? I want to see what you have on. And like they, the cashiers thought it was the cutest thing in the world but Kathy would like instantly start to my mom's name's Kathy but like (laughs) she would start to instantly like get hot and like start to sweat because she was like I'm waiting for the day somebody walks out from behind the counter and Garrett's just like those shoes are ugly because she's like if you like if you didn't like them like you would tell them but like think oh those are nice like I like those or whatever and like Kathy was like I'm just so nervous one day he's gonna be like your shoes are ugly (laughs) oh my gosh there's so always been like the same your whole life is what you're saying <laughs> yeah 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 now I don't ask that because I just like know as my experience working in retail right. that like you can't wear your slippers to work even if you're standing behind a cash register but <laughs> but yeah yeah I used to be very curious it was almost like my like Wizard of Oz moment like the you know, man behind the curtain <laughs> <laughs> That's- I love that. yeah <laughs> Yeah, so now I'm like getting my payback with Murphy because I never know what he's gonna do, but mm-hmm. he's a sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. Yeah. So, he's the so best. if you're in editing mode, yeah. are you reading anything at all? We normally ask at the end if you've read anything that you love, but you might yeah. be stuck in your edits. No, I, I have been, but I did. I got to, and this was so amazing. It was like, it was like for me, like narcotics. Um, I got to read. <laughs> My friend Sam Bailey's um, wow. A Friend in the Dark, which comes out in uh, next year. And so I got to read it early and I, you know, I finished that. And I like, I, I mean, I read it like over a weekend. I'm a very slow reader, but I, I was mm-hmm. glued. It's y'all going to freak out over it. It's so, it's her, like, I'm obsessed with all of her books, but this one is her best, my favorite. I love it. It's about, um, you might already know, but an online relationship mm-hmm. and kind of it's it's a little torrid and you know it's I don't want to give too much away. It's so good. We I love her so much. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm really excited for that one because one of my like I unwind with like true crime documentaries and stuff because I'm like no matter how much Murphy bites me or like how many times I lose my shit in a day, like I read or I watch like a true crime documentary and I'm like, well, my day wasn't that bad compared to like some of these other things. But the ones that I am fascinated with are the ones that involve online relationships like catfishing. And Mm -hmm. what was that one? The What was the one about the, the Tinder swindler? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Oh mm-hmm. my god. I mean, I just that like eat that shit up. Don't fuck with cats. Is that... <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know why I'm like awful with titles tonight, but yeah, I love anything to do with like online, like people like banding together and like taking down like shitty people. Oh my god. Oh yeah. It's like my drug. <laughs> Same. it's like my drug so like I already know like when you were like it's kind of like my version of like narcotics I'm like I totally know what you mean and then yeah. the fact that you said it was online like dealing with an online relationship I'm like I eat that shit up like I love the show catfish I don't care how fake it seems sometimes I don't care how many times I'm like are these paid actors I like the fact that it's just like people doing like shitty things online and there's always a twist at the end sign me I- up it i haven't i don't get to watch a lot of tv because of my kiddo and stuff but that actually i need to watch that immediately that sounds amazing Mm -hmm. yeah it is so good but the thing is too is that like you can kind of skip around or like watch an episode here and there because they're obviously not connected so like if you only have like a half hour to an hour to yourself at night it's like put on an episode of catfish and then like Maybe you'll be re- writing the book next about like online, online shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. I want to watch the affair too. That sounds great. Um, it's yeah, very it's good. so good because it's another one where each season they also start with like in the first season you start with people being interrogated, kind of similar to Big Little Lies, where mm-hmm. like you know something terrible happened, oh, and cool. then you go and then you go backward. And then you work your way back to like basically what did happen. But each episode starts with like getting a little bit of knowledge yeah, from post-traumatic event, basically. And I love, they do it every single season then. So then the next season, they start with something else horrible that happened. And you just like work your way up to it. It's some of the best storytelling because like it came out years ago and we still talk about it a ton. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and it's like New York City, like Montauk, Montauk. and oh my god! It was the first like... time I ever learned about Montauk, and then Same. I remember I thought it was just like a fake name made up for the show, and then I remember when I found out it was a real thing, I was like, oh my god, I know about that. <laughs> yeah, and Joshua Jackson's in it. Oh, yes. really? Awesome. Yeah, and who's? Why can't I think of the best female's name? Mara Tierney. The, there we go. Oh, no, oh. sorry. Ruth Wilson. The other one. Yes, that one. That's who I couldn't think of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. a great cast. It's just really, really yeah. good. Yeah, you'll love it. That could be like a little like treat for yourself. Like when you're done with yeah. your edits, like yeah. binge a little yeah, bit. It's like seven or eight episodes, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I always believe in contained. like, yeah, I always believe in like having like a, when you have a big task, like writing a phenomenal fucking book like you do (laughs) when you have a big task like that I totally believe in having what I call like a rot day where you just like yes take care of yourself drink whatever you want to drink order all the takeout you want binge watch tv just do whatever you can to like have a little bit of self-care but don't like throw yourselves to the wolves as soon as it's done like you can like do that to like celebrate yourself no I Mm -hmm. love I do I, yeah. funny, I actually, I took one of those this Monday and I had no business doing that, but I was like, I just have to take, and it was real, I just really just took half a day, but I was like, I have to just take a pause and yeah, it was great. I just went on a walk and went to a bookstore. It wasn't anything <gasps> like that great, but it was just, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. 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 Especially like, I mean, you've got a lot going on and you're writing these books. I mean, you're knocking out a, a book a year. Yeah. yeah that's you know? impressive. And they're not like 200 page, like popcorn thrillers. Like you're. And you're they all creating... feel different. That's the other, like, yeah. it's not just like regurgitated. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have like a, what is it called? I don't know why I can't think of any words Stick? today. Um, formulaic your books are not Mm. formulaic Mm -hmm. you know how like some people do that where it's like oh like you're reading their new book and then you're like well I know what's gonna Mm -hmm. happen here because it happened at 75% of like every other book but like yours are always like very different and 
there's a lot of like blood, sweat, and tears that go into your stories and your readers can tell that. So if you need to take a couple of rot days, then doctor's orders. <laughs> yes. Dr. Be, Dare. I'm going to look forward to the one that I take when I'm done with these edits because oh, I, I bet. don't like the editing process at all. I bet I'm trying to grow up a little bit and be an adult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get that. Yeah. I get that too. I get that too. But uh, then like, I, I can imagine those like moments where you get like your arcs in or you see like the final copy in mm. the bookstore for the first time, like all of those, mm -hmm. all of those like troublesome days and the days that really stress you out. I'm sure they're all worth it. They, they know yeah. they or I'm like, okay. And then, you know, yes, and it, it does become all worth it. So it's, but it is helpful to have those rewards because it can be such a quiet, lonely job. Thank mm -hmm. God for Instagram and Bookstagram. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Only it's like, it's so cool, you know, to, and I just had to kick myself off to finish, but I'm like, it's so nice to wake up and go on there and see y'all and you know everybody and not feel like you're just toiling in a cave by yourself yeah yes. yeah it's amazing it's an amazing community because like sometimes so if cool. I'm in like a reading rut like I will get on bookstagram and just see what other mm -hmm. people are like raving about and that's usually what I'll do to like pick myself up and you know just be like Jesus Garrett pick up a book like try to read yeah. something you know yeah, yeah. And because those are like what my rot days usually are is like just like picking up something that I don't want to put down and like mm -hmm. getting some Taco Bell. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, for yep. sure. Yeah. I love yeah. it. And I'm glad it. that Bookstagram has brought all of us together. Me too. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so cool. Yeah. God. Yeah. So I love the internet. I remember when I was in college and like wanted to like figure out which books I actually liked reading being like how do you find like Goodreads had just kind of become a thing so this was like 10-ish years ago basically and I remember just being like how do I find books <laughs> and then like finally got to Goodreads but then like when I really started getting onto Bookstagram I was like oh my gosh this is how you find all the books like everyone's yeah. just talking about different ones and it made it so easy to like always have something lined up where like it used to feel like how do I know about them so I oh, love for... the internet and the book community yeah. yeah yeah I feel like before bookstagram it was hard for me to like find books unless it was like gone girl girl right. on the train yes. or like luckiest girl alive that like everybody was like talking about after mm -hmm. they had come out for yeah, because sure. this was right after I finished Gone Girl. I was like, how do I find, like, where do I find more books like this? I know. So that was it. That was it. Yeah. And now that, like, media has shrunk so much, like, you know, coverage of books, you know, mm -hmm. and even print magazines and stuff, like, it's more mm -hmm. to have <sighs> Bookstagram help spread the word because it's hard to get yeah. Yeah. there. Um, yeah. And it's... Uh, it's really cool too how like I uh, like I know like whatever y'all are reading I'm gonna love like it's cool to know who you're who you can like yes. really their recommendations and yeah it saves yeah. me time because I'm like okay I'll just grab this and and I'm you know I'm never steered wrong not yeah not fair and also for like for us like as readers though it's amazing to have authors like you on bookstagram because when I read like a May Cobb book I'm like I want to know everything about this woman because like I love your story so much so for me I feel the same way that you do but it's like when I have somebody like you who writes books that I love so much and you share a book that you're reading or something mm -hmm. that you like, like that is like information that I wouldn't get if that platform didn't exist, you know? Cause yeah. Yeah. it's very rare that like, even if you were doing like in-person events, like not everybody who is a fan of your books could make it to an in-person event. But I feel like right. sometimes they're so like focused on, you know, let's talk about your book and get you out of here. And then like sell some copies that like, they don't yeah. usually ask like what books have you read recently like what do you recommend like what do you love so like to have that bookstagram you know platform where we can see what you are reading and what you like as well mm -hmm. like that's 
fantastic for me. Yeah. yeah. And I, I have to shout out because one of my best friends, um, I don't even know what is today, Wednesday. Okay. Yesterday. Yeah. Uh, it's Thursday, you're... but that's okay. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. I said, it, I said yes too. You're like, it's you Wednesday. Agreed. Like, I was like, totally. I have to tell you guys. <laughs> <laughs> was the latest book i'm not done with you yet uh, yeah yes and and i know y'all know but i'm just for the listeners like y'all have to get yes. this it's so devious and twisty and stabby awesome and uh i love it i keep so hearing great things about it i haven't read it yet yeah it's wild it is yeah. wild there's a lot of like twists and reveals in it and oh Kate, you will like it because half of it takes place in Oxford. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So you've got your dark academia and then like, oh. yeah, it's very much like, what would I do with the comparison? Like probably like Donna Tart meets like, I know what you did last summer. Yeah. Mm. Perfect. Nice. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very fun and it's very character driven. Yes. Oh, well, yes. You, I'm sold. <laughs> and talk, yeah. talk about character driven and twists. <laughs> talk about a snarky voice. Like Jesse just really nails, and this is her like her first adult psych suspense. And I'm like, yeah, you're pretty much like hold my beer. Here's my book. You know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that yeah. good. Like, yeah, it's really good. I, in so many different genres but she could just write in that one and kill it every time i don't know i don't know how she's so prolific it's insane that was that was cool that's mm-hmm. what i was wondering too because she does like ya and then like women's like comedy right like comedy lit yeah i don't like, say like women's fiction so like I, but i think they're like kind of like finley donovan-esque yeah, yeah. okay yeah yeah. yeah. So when I picked it up, I was surprised at how like her prose was with like how like snarky her character was. Like it's like probably like all of the things she's like wanted to put that like were too dark in her like YA books and like her other ones. Like Ooh. yeah. Yeah. She did a good job writing like bitchy characters. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a really good psychological read. Yeah. I enjoyed it. See, they're there. Now I just need to go read it. <laughs> yeah, these are May's recommendations. But I am so glad you took the time to join us tonight. I'm yeah. glad out. Like, oh my God, what a summer we were having when we first tried. And I was like in shambles. <laughs> and so thanks for letting me reschedule. This was this was so much better than that would have been. It was uh it's been a yeah a crazy summer. Things are good now, but my God. Yeah yeah well hey i mean sometimes it happens yeah and that's what we mean when we say like you got to take care of yourself you know yep you got to put may first like i do (laughs) it sounded like you said put may first like both (laughs) work (laughs) yeah (laughs) but yeah well listen thank you so much for joining us tonight and we can't wait to see what comes up next for you with with book number four so if you need yes. a little online therapy with your edits, DM me. I got your bag, girl. Okay, thank you. I will. Yeah. Well, we love you so much. Love y'all so much. Thank you so much. Have a great night.